everyone, and welcome to Westminster College on, rather, in Fulton, Missouri, for tonight's matchup between the 5-8 and eight Westminster Blue Jays women's basketball program and the 5-8 and eight Fontbonne Griffins women's basketball program, both tied for second in the SLEAC with a record of 4-2. and two. And let's meet tonight's starters. Mallory Proffer, the guard from Wildman, Missouri, the senior, will start things out alongside the reigning SLEAC Player of the Week, Riley Stafford, the 5'6 junior from Jackson, Missouri. Courtney White at guard from Hazelwood, Missouri, will start alongside the two forwards, the Venegas sisters from up north in Wisconsin. Jillian Venegas at forward from Racine, alongside Raven Venegas, the senior 5'10 forward, also playing at St. Catharines High School, as the Fon Von Griffins will wear purple with white accents. And for Westminster College, they'll send out Michaela, rather McKaylin Callahan, the senior forward from Lebanon, Missouri. Also joining her at the forward spot is Abby Reese out of Cape Girardeau, Cape, Cape Girardeau Missouri. The three guards for the Blue Jays are Corey Reese, at 5'8", sophomore playing alongside her sister, Abby. Callie Daller at guard from Barnesville, Ohio, and Reese Arnold, the sophomore guard from Lundell, Missouri. For the Blue Jays, they'll wear the home grays with baby blue numbers and baby blue, baby blues block across the chest. Navy blue accents down the sides. Blue Jays are led under the direction of first-year head coach Talisha Washington, 5-8 in her first year. Blue Jays off to a hot start in the SLEAC, 4-2, tied for second, and the picture getting a little more clear. Who are the teams to beat? Spalding and Webster currently sit tied for first. 13 games deep into the season, both 5-1, and one. and meanwhile, Eureka, Fontbonne, Westminster sit tied for third. Six games deep into conference play. Callahan will square off at center floor. As some fans fill into the stands, and we're set for basketball. Proffer on the receiving end for Fontbonne, and the opening tip off won by Reese Arnold. Quick ball movement down to the right collar, down the right corner, and a step out of bounds off the near side. So Fontbonne will get the ball back to start things out. No score, opening 11 seconds, a little bit different than how last week's game started out on a administrative technical foul when Blackburn came to town. Both teams over the last two games split it one and one. Fontbonne, however, has not, run a, has not won a road game since December 4th, and a long tray hits high, rebounded by Corey Reese on the far side. She'll push the floor, cross the timeline. Now the left wing, looks up top for Callahan. She moves between the circles, shake and bake, can't get it to fall off the right side. Big rebound cleared by Raven Venegas. The Venegas sisters make something happen, and Fontbonne is off to a quick 2-0 lead. Across the line, near side. Corey Reese up top to Abby Reese, swing it around left side. Reese Arnold drives down to the baseline, kicks it out, Callahan. Not a lot of options, sends it to the left, long three. Clanks high off the rim and rebounded by Proffer off the right block. Griffins will continue to push the floor. They're on top two to nothing, first a minute here in Fulton, Missouri. Jillian Venegas hands off to Courtney White. Back to the right side, Stafford. The reigning SLEAC player of the week, 44 points in her last two games and a shot that rims in and out from Raven Venegas. Corey Reese over to her sister Abby. Reese left corner, drives baseline, floater up and it's in. Knots the game at two, Westminster finally on the board. 8.20 to go, opening quarter. The Blue Jays show a half court press as they'll follow the ball with Stafford. Stafford double teamed, has to get it across the line and a travel's called. First turnover of the game called on Fontbonne with the Blue Jays playing some tough defense. Ball inbounded, Corey Reese. Flipped over to Callie Daller. Daller will dribble a couple of times up to the top of the key, finds Reese Arnold popping from the left elbow. Arnold on the board with two points, and it's Westminster's lead on top. Four to two. Cross center floor, Courtney White. Hands off to Stafford. Looks to Proffer. In the front court with 20 to shoot. 
Hands off right wing, and Courtney White will move down low. Meanwhile, wide open shot for Jillian Venegas. Her sister Raven rebounds, puts it up. No good on the left hand, and the Blue Jays rebound. Blue Jay basketball here to Reese on the near side, working very quickly from left to right. Callahan finds wide open Reese Arnold for three. Can't pop it. Second rebound of the game for Raven Venegas. Rather make that Venegas, and here comes Fontabon. Griffins trail 4-2 after taking an early 2-0 lead. Wide around the side to Proffer. She'll move in between the circles, sends it up left, and a big rebound. Abby Reese fires ahead. Ball's on the floor. Callie Dowler can't do much for it, except a jump ball is called. Possession arrow sticks with Fontbonne. 6.57 left in the first quarter, and so far Westminster College has the lead. Steal is awarded to Jillian Venegas. The officials motion around to run the clock. So the clock will continue to roll. Rather, they mark it down to 6.52. So inbounded for White. Hands off Stafford. Blue Jays have kept her at bay so far. Dropped 24 points last time out against Eureka. It was a win for Fontbonne at home. Now she'll pop a three. Nothing but net. Soft touch from downtown. Fontbonne jumped back ahead five to four. Elbow thrown as we go down low and off to the left side. A foul called against Abby Reese. Rather, Raven Venegas. We'll get the call, and Westminster will have the inbound for the baseline. Five to four, Blue Jays trail. Callahan calls for the ball deep. Finally inbound, and Callahan off the left wing will drive down low, breaks the press by Raven Venegas, and comes away with two. Jays retake the lead, six to five. Hand off to White. Looks for the... Looking Stafford, but Stafford instead breaking some ankles and fires a three. Now goes one for two from downtown. Took that from Route WW. Now the Blue Jays will try to extend on the 6-5 Lee Callahan for three. Clanks up high and rebounded by Stafford down low. She'll push the four from right to left. Abby Reese still playing with a splint on her left hand. Came out of the locker room at halftime against Blackburn with it. A great spin move by Raven Venegas. Same way she did it up in Racine, Wisconsin, but no good. Already has a couple steals, couple rebounds on the game, but a zip ball down to Reese Arnold. Kicks out Corey Reese for three, no good, and rebounded again by Jillian Venegas. And Fontbonne will look to make a substitution as well as the Blue Jays. Proffer up top. Hand off to White. Thinking about it from downtown, too strong. And Fontbonne has tried a lot of threes today. One of five so far, two of nine from the floor, and the Blue Jays turn it over. A little too tenacious with trying to find Callie Dowler on a cut to the rim. Corey Reese will check out. In comes Michaela Jackson, the junior from Eureka, Missouri. We'll also see Abby Nichols for the first time to give Michaela and Callahan a seat on the bench. New face into the game for the Griffins, Madison Boaz. Boaz takes the spot of Raven Venegas. Already doing a good job of helping break the press. First player in off the bench. Weave in the front court, 17 to shoot. As Proffer moves left side, gives to Stafford. Pick is set, drives to the right. Puts it up off the cup and fouled on her way to the rim. First foul of the game. Called against Abby Nichols in only her first playing minute. 4.46 left in the first quarter, and it's 6-5, to five, Westminster leading. Blue Jays are 3 of 8 from the floor, 0 of 4 from downtown. And the first free throw is in and out off of Riley Stafford. Talked about it earlier, but got, just got her second SLEAC Player of the Week honors this week. Goes for the second to tie the game 6-6. Six to six. Reese Arnold to the right side. Jackson 
Pulls the ball high above her head, now decides to go within the paint. Brings it back out beyond the line. Looking for an open teammate, gives to Reese Arnold. Dribble drives on the serpentine right side, count the bucket and one. Reese Arnold going to the free throw stripe and it puts the Jays on top, eight to six, a chance to make it a three point game. Reese Arnold spent a lot of the time coming off the bench this season. Out of Washington High School and makes it an old fashioned three point play. Nine to six, Blue Jays on top. Full court press, trap into the corner, kicked up top for Boaz. Skip the ball across the sneer side and Riley Guffey weave the ball to Stafford. Still up top the key, 15 to shoot. Running the same play. With Jillian Venegas, guarded tough, hands in her face, no good. Great job by Abby Nichols, the freshman, helping force the missed shot, and Reese Arnold will push the floor. Falls down, draws the foul. Arnold will shoot a pair. Jillian Venegas, meanwhile, will pick up foul number three on the game for Fontbon, her second individually. 3.59 left to go, first quarter, nine to six. Blue Jays in the driver's seat. And Reese Arnold makes it a four point game. Arnold just a moment ago is at the free throw line after driving and picking up a two point bucket. Now goes two for three from the stripe in this game, but still has seven points on the night. I'd rather make that six. Boaz has it stolen away. It's Michaela Jackson, a foot race to the hoop and puts it off the right side. It's off the glass. Cashes in the check for two. Blue Jays double up the lead, 12 to six. Trying to solidify their spot as number two in the conference early. But the ball's tipped out of bounds and will be in favor of Fontbonne. Leading score so far for the Griffins, it's Stafford with all six points. Two for three from the floor, one for two from downtown, and one free throw. She was all the offense last week when Fontbonne lost on the road to Spalding, 80 to 49, dropped 20 points in that game, but was part of her way to earning the Sliak Players of the Week honors. Down to the right side, Stafford will dribble inside, pops the 10-footer, air ball to Reese Arnold. Here come the Blue Jays. Arnold lost control of the rock, but no one guarding her is able to come across unevaded. Gives to Jackson. Jackson bounce pass, left corner for Miller. Miller back up top to Reese. And a great weave and ball movement by the Jays on this set. Corey Reese off the glass, rather make that Abby Reese. And Jackson fights with the rebound, gets it up. Underhanded layup, no good, a fight for the ball, jump ball. With both Nichols, as well as Stafford, getting their hands on the basketball. Possession error was not changed, this is the second. The second jump ball of the game, so it is Westminster basketball as Talisha Washington calls out a play, we'll see what the Blue Jays run. 2.49 left to go, first quarter. Thanks for spending your Wednesday night with us here on the Blue Jays Sports Network. It's been a good one so far if you're a Blue Jay fan. Miller will pop the three and a high carom. Offensive board number three on the game for Reese Arnold and fire another three for Jackson, no good. Lit on the rim for the Blue Jays from downtown. Now they're 0 of 6. Still on top, 12 to 6, and all the points coming for Stafford for Fontabon, but. Reese Arnold across the line, she'll go toe to toe with Scherenberg. Off to Brown, get it to the left side for Miller. Miller down low, wide open, look to the cup for Abby Reese. And a timeout called by Maureen Lucias. 
Blue Jays on a big run. 14 to 6. They lead 2-11 to go first quarter. We'll be right back after this on the Blue Jays Sports Network. Welcome back to Westminster College. Blue Jays on top, 14 to six. Fontabon with a good weave in the backcourt and they'll try to cut into this deficit just a bit. Off the right side and a fight down low for White should go to the line. Jackson's first foul of the game, second of the quarter on the Blue Jays. And Courtney White at the line out of Hazelwood Central High School. Stayed in town to play with Fontbonne and becomes the first player other than Riley Stafford for the Griffins to get a point tonight. Second free throw rattles out. Crowd by Brown and the Blue rather by Abby Nichols. Blue Jays will push the floor. Left side, high hook. Rebounded big by Jackson. Still out to the left side. Abby Centerfield clears it away, and the Blue Jays have a fresh shot clock. Chalk it up to 15 seconds, a three hoisted. And through the net for Corey Reese from downtown. Took him seven tries, but the Blue Jays finally knocked down a tray, and they lead by 10. How will Fontbon respond? Step back three, maybe foot on the line. Rebound fought by Raven Venegas. And a travel on the floor. Took three steps and Callahan will come into the game as Abby Nichols checks out. Jillian Venegas for Fontbon will take the floor for Riley Stafford. Both Venegas sisters back out to play. Corey Reese, Serpentine is to the left. Down left corner for Callahan. Callahan to Jackson, she'll pop the 10 footer. Misses it near side, a little short. Venegas with the rebound and Fontbon will reset. Hand off top of the key, Madison Boaz. Gives left side for White. Nearly lost right perimeter. Riley Guffey, your right corner, intercepted, tiptoe on the line. Here comes Michaela Jackson. Jackson up floor to Miller. Miller off the right side, it's no good, but flying in and trying to pick up the ball with possession arrow sticks with Fontbon is Michaela Jackson. Like the effort from Westminster College, they're just not able to come away with the basketball. Play was all set up off the left side with Michaela Jackson on the fast break. Fed it up to Miller and came flying in to get the ball, but sometimes the possession arrow sticks the other way. Under 19 seconds to play, first quarter, no shot clock. Then all Blue Jays in this one, 17 to seven, they lead. And Jillian Venegas travels with the ball, rather make that a Raven Venegas. Westminster can hold for the final shot. And the clock starts to roll down to eight seconds. Corey Reese with six seconds. Hands off Kendall Miller, left side, center field. One second at the buzzer, it's short. And the first quarter goes into the books with the Blue Jays on top, 17 to seven. A lot of more great basketball up to come as we start our SLEAC doubleheader this Wednesday night in Fulton, Missouri. We'll see you back in just a second here in Callaway County.
at the end of the first quarter. It's Fontabon trailing Westminster College 17 to seven. Welcome back on the Blue Jays Sports Network. James Stanley with you here from court side at Henry P. Iba Court. Coached here back in the 1920s and here we go to start quarter number two. Let's take a look at some of the halftime stats. With the Blue Jays one to seven from beyond three. Shake and bake for Abby Reese down low and turned over. Jillian Venegas will bring it to the near side. It's tipped into the scorer's table. The last touch to her sister, Abby Reese. Meanwhile, the Blue Jays 7 of 21 from down, rather, from the floor in the first. The Griffins just went 2 of 14, 1 of 5 from beyond the arc, and the one tray given to Stafford. Officials blow the play dead. Looks like did not reset the shot clock. Now they mark it down to 24 seconds. Blue Jays out rebounded the Griffins 16 to 12. And the Griffins turn the ball over five times and a three that angles off the right side missed by Jillian Venegas. Reese Arnold looks to turn up the heat, but a handoff to Corey Reese left side. Tries to find Arnold, cut into the rim, and another steal for Jillian Venegas. Third steal of the ball game for the Griffins, and Venegas, whether it's Jillian or Raven, have both got, gotten their hands on the basketball. 15 to shoot. Proffer on the perimeter, cuts down low, and Corey Reese takes it away. Reese angles center floor. Now drives baseline, floats it up high off the glass, and it misses out. Too strong, and Proffer will come back from right to left with it for the purple. Purple and white, the colors for Fontbonne, and a handoff to Stafford, weaves it up top to white. Left wing for Jillian Venegas. Venegas hands off, Proffer cuts to the right side, finds a wide open look, and Raven Venegas decides not to shoot. Will muscle up down low between the circles, floats it right hand, and it's good for two. Lead is down to eight for Westminster College, but the Blue Jays did have a double-digit lead, their largest of the night just a moment ago. Abby Reese near side gives to Callie Dowler. Steph Curry range three, and it rims out hard. Reese Arnold, whoever, tracks it down. Long offensive board, and the Blue Jays continue to roll. Had several opportunities on second chance looks. Callie Dowler will turn around and fire, misses. Rebound a low by Reese Arnold, but it is last touched out of bounds. Jillian Venegas tried to bring it up floor and dribbled it off of Reese Arnold's foot. Look at how the game has played out. Fontbonne got off to a heavy, rather a quick start. Led two to nothing for the first couple minutes. Then the Blue Jays said, this is our home floor. Meanwhile, off to the right side, Courtney White takes it in for two. That's a 4-0 run for Fontbonne here in quarter number two. But a lot of basketball left to play. High three, big rebound, Callie Dowler catch and shoot, bang! Drills the three. Separates the lead by nine for Westminster. Left side. Foul on the floor, and Jillian Venegas takes a spill on the hardwood. About a two-hour drive from Westminster College to Fontbonne off a of US 64, rather make that Interstate 64. I'm sure for Fontbonne, they're happy they're playing tonight and not this weekend. More snow and ice supposed to be coming this way of mid-Missouri and Callaway County on Friday to Saturday. Second free throw, hits high and rebounded by Callahan. Callahan weaves across the floor, finds Abby Reese down low. Takes her shot and goes up hard. Jillian Venegas falls down to the floor. Jillian Venegas will pick up her third foul. She's slow to get up. Hey. 
Trainer from the Westminster side of the floor comes out to walk her off the floor. And two shots upcoming for the Blue Jays. Jays are two of three from the free throw line tonight. We start to look at the numbers for the Blue Jays and looking at Corey Reese getting her first start of the season. We've yet to see Ray Imamura dress out today. Up until the night, it started all 13 games. But 6.55 remaining in the half. Full court press shown by the Jays. Can the Griffins break it? Wide across the line, gives to Proffer. Proffer thought about the three, instead goes inside, but Reese Arnold smacks the ball away, and that foils her plans for a two-point cup. Six forty-three left in the half. Ema Moore is out tonight after a 1.3 rebound game last time out on the road at Webster on Saturday. It's a two-game homestand for the Blue Jays. They'll take on Spalding at home this Saturday. And a nifty move. Reese Arnold popped the J. Too strong. And a big collision. Corey Reese, rather Abby Reese, not calling for the foul. Went over the back on Boaz. White, meanwhile, great ball handling. Tucked the ball to her right, and a timeout called with a big run by Fontbonne. They cut into the lead. Now down to five with 6-12 remaining in the half. Coach Washington, a... Personal trainer here in Fulton as well as a former assistant coach with Fulton High School girls basketball. She spent the last three years before taking over the job left by James Arnold. Let's take a closer look at the standings, however, on the SLEAC women's side. Spalding and Webster, top of the conference at 5-1. and one. Eureka, Greenville, and Fontbonne, as well as Westminster sitting tied for second at 4-2. and two. Meanwhile, Blackburn at two and four, and the bottom of the pack, Iowa Wesleyan one and four, Mac Murray one and five, and Principia 0 and seven. Principia's yet to win a game in conference, they're 0 and 11. We are keeping tabs on that Webster-Blackburn game tonight, and so far halfway through the second quarter, it's Webster on top 35 to 17 over the Beavers. Callahan in and out, gets the ball back off of Reese Arnold and puts it in. Just the way Coach Washington drew up the play. Wants her team to trap on the near side. Instead, press is broken. Courtney White will dribble angle out, angling out to the right. Gives to Stafford. And Raven Venegas cuts right side. Nifty footwork. Her sister may have three fouls, but she's picking up the slack. Raven Venegas with six points. Courtney White leading all scores with seven. Very different than the first quarter, and Callie Daller will pop a two that it's in and out. Rebounded to Abby Reese. Trying to kick it out, instead throws it away to Courtney White. White spins around. One on two, she doesn't care. Angles in and draws the foul. Lowered the boom on the shoulder. But Corey Reese's feet were not set. It's the third foul of the quarter on the Blue Jays. Two more in its free throws for the Griffins. Proffer will trickle the ball in with her team down 23 to 18, but calling their way back. Raven Venegas hands off Stafford from three. High rebound, Proffer gets the board. Great ball movement to White. Back to Proffer, cutting down low and lost the ball off her foot. Blue Jay basketball pointing to the right side. Reese leads the Blue Jays with six points. Bounces the ball to Callahan, top of the key, gives it left wing. Dowler into the paint. The pass to Corey Reese, rather Abby Reese, and misses it. Raven Venegas with rebound number five. Six points, five boards away from a double-double. Takes the ball down into traffic. Muscles to the right side, and misses to the right, and rebounded by Abby Reese for the Blue Jays. Go, 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 go. 
Arnold center floor will make her move. Kicks it out on a no look to Jackson. Jackson left. Elbow shakes and bakes and dishes left corner for Arnold. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Abby Reese gives it inside. Michaela Jackson pulls up and shoots. Rather make that Callahan no good. Callahan two for six from the floor in this game. A little handsy on the other end of the floor with Stafford drawing the foul and Callie Dowler called for the block. Fontbon will make two substitutions. Scherenberg, joined by Guffey, will take the place of Raven Venegas and Courtney White, the leading scorer for the Griffins. Should be the fourth team foul on the Blue Jays. They mark the third on the scoreboard. Proper left corner. He zips the ball up top for Guffey. Guffey hands off Stafford. The foul is called. Fourth one of the quarter, according to the scoreboard, which doesn't lie. Second one of the game against Michaela Jackson. Inbounded to Boaz. Decided to not face the heat and kicks it out. Down to Scherenberg as she shakes off the right side. And Jackson, I think that Callahan got her hands up in her face and lost the ball out of bounds. Officials set to talk things over and wait for the inbound at the 333 mark left in the half. Put nine seconds on the shot clock. The Griffins will have to pay attention. They trail by five, 23-18. Eight to shoot. Quadruple team. Stafford fights away for it. Turns it over to Dowler. Dowler, baseball throw. Up the floor, Abby Reese takes for two. It's good. Coach Washington calls for her girls to get back on defense. Let's run a few more plays like that and separate the lead. It's back up to seven with 3.08 to go first half. Hand off right side. Guppy will dribble down to the left wing. And takes a hard foul. She's whacked on her way off the left side. Fifth foul, and it's free throws the way out. For Westminster. Meanwhile, Raven Venegas and White will check in. Out will come Proffer and Scherenberg. At the line shooting two is Riley Guffey. Guffey, the only stat on the game is one rebound. She'll add one point. Cuts the lead down to six. Second free throw is in and out. Great awareness by Callahan to stay away from the basketball. Is poked out by Boaz. Here comes Reese Arnold with it across the floor for the Blue Jays. Arnold the ball bounced to Callahan. She'll pop up the two, chases the rebound, but didn't need to go for it. Callahan strokes it for her sixth point of the game. Blue Jays gaining some momentum. They lead by eight with 2.36 to play. First half, Stafford with the collision left side will go to the line. Barreled into Michaela Jackson. A couple free throws coming the way of Stafford and the third foul on the board for Michaela Jackson. Stafford with six points, all six coming in the first quarter. The first free throw is true to its mark. Let the second one fly, it's good as well. Griffins won't go away. 
Reese Arnold near side gives up top. Callie Dowler popped the three. Couldn't bang the drum. Vontbon has done a good job rebounding down low, tipping the ball up, and it's brought the other way by Riley Guppy. Guppy to Raven Venegas, trying to go off the cup left side, rebounded by Callahan, and it's three on two. Dowler pulls up, waits for the rest of her team to join her left wing, up top the key for Reese Arnold. Arnold dribble drives, left side, high off the glass, and it pinballs out. Two rebounds for Guppy in the last 30 seconds, and here she goes left side. Blue Jays try to meet her, and the defense is broke, but a missed opportunity. No good for Madison Boaz. White guards Dowler up top. Dowler pulls up to Arnold. Moving down low, Miller from downtown. Can't drill the three. Air balled into Raven Venegas' grasp. Behind the back, ball handling skills for Guffey. Guffey's been a spark of offense. Laces it through, and the lead dwindles down to four for the Blue Jays. 1.13 to go in the first half. Fontbonne has crawled their way back, trying to get back in the driver's seat. They haven't seen the lead since the opening minute of this contest, and Dowler drives high left side, fouled by Boaz. <laughs> Boaz is first foul of the game. Callahan will take a seat. Abby Reese joins her. Sutterfield and Nichols come in to take the set. Dowler's first free throw is knocked down. Gives Dowler four points on the night. One of five from the floor, one of three from beyond the arc. Blue Jays led 17 to seven at the end of the first quarter and the second free throw rims out. And the Griffins so far in the second have outscored Westminster 16 to 11. Stafford finds the ball in the right corner. Raven Venegas turns around, faces the rim. Still holding on to the ball, will finally put it on the wood, kicks it out, Boaz from downtown. Rims out hard right side. Proud by Stafford, but she stepped on the baseline. Four point eight ticks between the shot clock and the final 30 seconds of the first half, and it's been a great matchup so far. Still waiting for Reese Arnold to get involved. Sutterfield low, walks to the ball. Turnover by the Blue Jays, their eighth of the game. Three-point shooting has not been the story of this one. Westminster 2 of 12, Fontbonne 1 of 7. Stafford with 12 seconds left in the quarter gives to Raven Venegas, creates some space. What a pretty shot. Down to five seconds, four seconds, three seconds. Deep inbound, stolen away, and it's good to the rim. What a finish to the first half for Riley Guffey. Difference maker off the bench. And the Blue Jays' 10-point lead falls down to one at the first half buzzer. 28-27. Fontbon roars back. They outscore the Blue Jays 20-11 in the second. And that'll send us to break as we'll rejoin you in just a moment on the Blue Jays Sports Network. Westminster is hanging on, but only by one. This is Westminster College Basketball.
Halftime coming to a close as the Blue Jays lead the Griffins 28 to 27 here on the Westminster College Blue Jays Sports Network. Thanks for spending your Wednesday night with us here from the building made famous by Winston Churchill and Westminster College ever since the late 1940s been a stopping ground for tourists as well as all others fans of Churchill. But let's get back to the action as Stafford leads all scores with eight points. She's been the highlight for Fontbonne in the last three games. 44 points coming into tonight's matchup over the last two games. And two rebounds for her, two of six from the floor, one of three from beyond the arc. Courtney White picked up the slack with seven points in the second quarter. Up until then, at the start of the first, it was Stafford leading all scores with six and really was almost all the offense for Fontbonne. But the Griffins have pulled into a one-point deficit after a great four-point 4-0 run in the final 15 seconds of the first half. They shot 10 of 20 from the floor, 1 of 7 from downtown. And for the Blue Jays, they went 11 of 36 from the floor, 2 of 12 from beyond the arc. Look at some of these players that have missed several three-pointers. Reese Arnold for 3. That's uncharacteristic for her. And even for Kendall Miller, she had to attempt one from beyond the arc. But we'll see if the Blue Jays can come up with a game plan that will solidify their spot as number 2 in the conference they are sitting second tie with four other schools in the SLEAC and trying to chase that number one look with Webster sitting number one. And speaking of Webster, into the first half, they lead Blackburn 51-21. And the other score we're keeping a look at is Iowa Wesleyan playing host to Mac Murray. And Iowa Wesleyan, last time we checked, was on top at the half. Get an official score for you there with Fontbonne starting out to start out. In quarter number three, White into traffic, picks up her dribble, goes right side block, kicks it out with Raven Venegas, a nifty move left side, and Fontbonne is its first lead since the opening 30 seconds. And at the half, Iowa Wesleyan leads 25-24 over Mac Murray at home. Blue Jays, they'll look to respond in a good dish to Callahan. Callahan's bucket maybe will become a seesaw battle between the two. First quarter was owned by the Blue Jays. Second quarter had the Griffins' name all over it. 3-2 defense. Follow the ball, they'll switch out to the near side. Proffer shakes off the right. Shot too low off the bottom of the rim and dribbled the ball out of bounds, but last touch by Corey Reese. Alicia Washington wanted her team to pull down that rebound. 30-29, opening 50 seconds here. In the second half, that historic gym. Inbound to White, back to Proffer, denied the open long two. Bouncer to White, White down low. Reese Arnold reaches in and she'll be charged for the foul, wanted the jump ball call. Arnold's first foul of the game. Reese watches a teammate to inbound, floats it up for Boaz. Boaz underneath, then a no good shot rejected. And two blocks, rather a block and a jump ball with the possession arrow for the Blue Jays. Abby Reese got a paw on Boaz's drive. Stafford rebounded and Reese was in the right spot. Dallar with 20 to shoot, double team, pulls the ball up top of the key with Callahan finding Reese Arnold wide open for a tray. Floats it high and long, and Callie Dallar can't pull in the long rebound. Starting to look like Ray Imamura's impact on this game for Westminster starting to hurt the Blue Jays just a bit. She's out for the night with an undisclosed injury. Raven Venegas, last touch the ball out of bounds. Like the pass anyways from White, but. Hey, slice, slice. Blue Jays will try to capitalize on this one point lead. Corey Reese near side up to Dowler and a turnover. Ninth one of the night for the Blue Jays. Now it's the Griffins turn to take the lead. They can knock down the shot. Weave to Proffer on the W logo. Left side for Boaz. Boaz into the paint, top of the key. Raven Venegas steps inside, now steps back out. 
Dribbles the ball and Reese Arnold. Can't believe it, it's not butter she stuck her hand in. Three fouls already for Arnold. Start to look at the foul trouble for the Blue Jays. Callahan chases the ball out of bounds, tossed it away. Arnold is out and in comes Michaela Jackson. Jackson on the night, just two points, one of five from the floor. 17 to shoot, great spin cycle. No one's gonna touch her when she moves that well. Raven Venegas with another two points. That gives her eight and she's time for the team lead with Stafford. Venegas steals it. Corey Reese from behind will try to get the block. She's successful but Stafford mops up the mess. Timeout called by Talisha Washington. Full timeout, she wants to talk things over with her team. The largest lead of the night for Fontbonne. 33 to 30 with 7.43 left, quarter number three. Great steal and a great effort by Corey Reese to get back and play some defense. Just not in time to keep Stafford and company from mopping up the ball on the floor. Take a look at the rest of the scores around the conference. Webster starting out their second half against Blackburn, and the Beavers are on a 7-3 run. They still trail, however, 54-28. And no update from Iowa Wesleyan playing host to Mac Murray. Both teams with identical records, 5-8 overall, 4-2 in the Slee Act, tied for second. This starts to become a pivotal point in the season. You can't really lose these games against teams that are on the same threshold as you are, and for Westminster, their slate does not get any easier. They dropped a game over the weekend to Webster after picking up a couple of wins last week. Fontbonne shows a full court press. Blue Jays break it. Jackson off to the near side. Hands off Abby Reese into the corner. Ball poked away by a white. Guards are like a bulldog. Dribbling it down to the line. Up top to Corey Reese. Stutter stops, gives to Jackson. Abby Reese, wide open three. Can't drill from downtown. High rebound. And corralled by Callahan and Dowler. 11 to shoot for Corey Reese on the left side. Gives to Callahan, moves down low, throws it away. Stafford will steal the ball. 7.03 left to go, quarter number three in the Blue Jays. Need some momentum back their side. They led by 10 at the end of the first quarter. The Griffins will not go silently into the night, but White's too short on her left side layup. Left-handed layup from the right side, and up top, Blue Jays are reset as Corey Reese calls a play. Pats her head a few times, now goes to the left side lane. In between the circles, Raven Venegas swats her on her way to the rim. And no, the foul's not on Raven Venegas. Mallory Proffer will pick up her second. Corey Reese will trigger it in, trying to find an open look. Finally gives to Callahan, left corner. Blue Jays have 18 seconds to work with. Jackson drives down low, double team. Bouncer over to Callahan for three. Callahan fires and makes her shot. Count the tray, we're tied back at 33. First, second half, three-point bucket for the Jays. Fontbonne had the three-point lead on a run. 4-0 to start out the half. White fires left side for Proper. Off the right elbow, pivots Raven Venegas, drills a two. Every time the Blue Jays start to claw back into their scoring position, rather with the lead, Griffins are right there to put him back down. Corey Reese lost the dribble, Raven Venegas strips it away. Scrum for the ball and a jump ball on the floor.
And the possession arrow did not reset. And it's Westminster basketball. Callahan with 11 points. Leading score for the Jays, six rebounds. Just knocked down that three-pointer to tie the game, but Griffin's back on by two. Ten seconds on the shot clock to Abby Reese, right wing. Callie Dowler will pull up three. Bang! Lead back for Westminster, 36-35. Halfway through the third quarter. Griffins look for a weave. For White, send a left side wing. Stafford down low. Jillian Venegas back into the game for the first time since coming out with an injury. Back in the second quarter. Good to see her back on her feet. Griffins have a lot of energy. They look dead at the end of the first quarter. Looked like it's gonna be an all one side offensive night for Stafford and now the leading scorer is Raven Venegas. Ball tipped away, Stafford poked it off the hand. Jackson. 36-35, 4.56 left to go, third quarter. Blue Jays lead. Corey Reese to Jackson. Bring a center floor, angling up to the near side. Hands off to Dowler. Dowler shakes and banks and a ball down on a pass to Abby Reese. Left side too short. Jackson cleans up. The insurance policy is going to the line. Callahan with 13, a chance to make it 14 on the free throw. Callahan's first free throw attempt of the night, and it's good. Four point advantage, Blue Jays. Stafford to Jillian Venegas, gives to White right wing. Wright brings the center floor back to Stafford down to the right corner. 17 to shoot. Up top the key, pass for White, dribbles left side. Guarded tall by Jackson, and double dribbled. Now the game's starting to look like the first quarter for the Blue Jays. Can they hold on to the lead? 10 points was not large enough for Fontbon to climb back in. Corey Reese, far side across the Henry P. Iba script. Gives a Dowler for downtown, and Karam's high bricks to the right side. White finds Jillian Venegas, two on one. Venegas, what a move! Her sister Raven loves it. Popped up off the bench, mimicked her motion. And now to the left side on the response. Dowler can't get it to fall, rather make that Corey Reese. Fontbonne will hold, leading 30, rather trailing 39-37. Right side drive. And Jillian Venegas denied the three and said hands off to Guffey, the hero at the end of the first half. Guffey finds White. Foot on the line, drives inside, wanted to take the closer shot, but it's no good. Back to Corey Reese's game as she directs traffic up top center floor. Across the line and will dribble left side. Draws a foul. <laughs> Jillian Venegas charged with her fourth foul. She'll come out. The wall is white on the floor right now for Fontbon. It's Stafford, Graven Venegas, Boaz Proffer, and Guffey. Dowler behind the back dribble into traffic, gives out to Callahan. Team one to the three, pulls up the J on the long two. High rebound, bounce two a little too high and into the hands of Proffer. Proffer finds Stafford near side. She'll wait for her teammates to join. Stafford has great awareness. The reigning Slayak player of the week wants to wait for her teammates to give her some backup. Hands off Proffer, right wing, decides not to shoot the three, go for the sure thing inside. Bucket counts, but Raven Venegas walked with it. 
He's had a couple turnovers like that tonight. Six of 12 from the floor, 12.6 boards. One of the reasons why the Griffins have been able to climb back into a position to retake the lead, but they do trail 39-37 with 2.34 to go. Quarter number three. You love to see Raven Venegas flying all over the floor, just knock the ball out of bounds. It is Westminster basketball. The Dowler will have the inbound in front of her own bench. Gives Corey Reese. Raven Venegas trying to keep Callie Dowler at bay. Ten to shoot. Reese changes directions. Gets the pick set, drives left side. Calls for a charge. Rather not Corey Reese on the charge, old tag Abby Nichols. Nichols with her first foul tonight. Raven Venegas, the pass to Boaz, hands off Stafford, 15 to shoot. Zips the ball to the right side. Raymond Venegas makes a move, kicks it out. Boaz steps on the line for a three. But lost the ball out of bounds. A great effort by Stafford, but not enough to keep it in play. Just under two to go, third quarter. Callahan, the senior from Lebanon, Missouri. Leading with 14 points, trying to get open. Left side, the ball poked out. Stafford following all the way to the line. Scherenberg will come in to take the spot of Madison Boaz. Give it down low, Nichols. Nichols to the cup. Off the glass. Nichols, the freshman from Otterville, on the board. Her first two points. Does have five rebounds, getting it done defensively. Raven Venegas thought about the long two. Hands off Stafford outside the perimeter. Drives right side. She's going to the bucket with two and a shot to make it three. And Abby Nichols will pick up her third foul. Start to look at foul trouble for the Blue Jays. Jackson with three, Reese Arnold with three. But the main difference makers, Callahan, Dowler, and Abby Reese, collectively they have 28 of the 41 tonight. Just two fouls between the three are well distributed. Callahan with footsteps. Her team on top, 41 to 40. Corey Reese will bring it down to the right side. Kicked up top for Jackson. Puts the ball on the floor, angles left. Reverses it right side for Corey Reese. Ten to shoot. Corey Reese makes her move into traffic, two on one. In and out, big rebound up off the glass, and Abby Nichols going to shoot a pair. Nichols put it high off the glass, but We'll get a shot to make up for the two points anyways. A lot of spin on the first one, and it clanks off the rim twice. Look for it again. Goes one for two. This game could come down to the wire as quarter number three comes to a close. Guffey left side pass for Scherenberg. Finds Raven Venegas down low. Kick back out for Guffey. Guffey had a wide open look after Raven Venegas came out and instead Guffey finds Raven Venegas for another two. No shot clock, 20 seconds left in the quarter. We're tied 42 all. Callahan splits the zone, goes down low and nothing with the right hand. Deep inbound with eight seconds. Crawford has time, kicks it right wing. Stafford fires from downtown, and it hits hard off a of right point. And the Blue Jays take a 44 to 42 lead into quarter number four. 
Game is heating up, and we'll take a break on the Blue Jays Sports Network. We join you just after this. It's 44-42, Westminster leading Fontbonne. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday night for SLEAC basketball. Ten minutes on the board, fourth quarter about to start. Blue Jays lead the Griffins 44-42. James Stanley with you here on the call. We'll have the men's game coming up as part of the SLEAC doubleheader on the Blue Jays Sports Network. But Guffey, tough defense spot by Dowler, sends it right side for Stafford. Stafford a high pass. And Raven Venegas off the glass, another two. Venegas out of Racine, Wisconsin. Ties the game again, 44 all, 14 points for the senior. Reese Arnold playing with three fouls, will play the final 10 minutes. Zips the ball down low, Kelly Dowler cutting left side, couldn't get it to fall. Love the play call, but not good enough for the bucket. Griffins will try to retake the lead. Their largest lead of the night's been three points, but it's tipped by Kelly Dowler. Rather make that Corey Reese, and here she pushes it left to right. Got her directions all mixed up from right to left, and she's fouled on her way to the rack. 44-44. Two free throws for Corey Reese. On the season, a 67% foul shooter. First free throw of the night is nothing but nylon. Points are at a premium if you're either side, and she goes two for two, breaking the eight for 12 narrative. Good as a layup. The Blue Jays back on top. Two point lead. White bounce pass over to Boaz. Hands off Guffey. Guffey's thinking about the three instead, gives it to Stapper, but Corey Reese seals the hole down low. Raven Venegas, meanwhile, dribbles hard, double teamed. Splits it out, Guffey for three, Guffey, a tray. Griffin's back on top by one, 47-46. Could come down to a buzzer beater from either side. And Corey Reese finds her sister, Abby. Moves left side and no good as Boaz had hands in her face. Guffey, the toast of the first half, forcing the steal and making it a one point game. Brings the ball back across the line, but great ball movement. She gets the ball back, another three. Just hit the trader, put her team on top by one, and can't miss that time. Corey Reese across the timeline, directs traffic with the left hand while dribbles with the right. Float up to Callahan. Callahan dribble drive right side. High off the cup, but had it blocked. Stafford got a paw on it. White pushes up the floor, wants the bucket. Foul called on the shot, rather on the floor, but not on the shot. And Abby Reese will be called for a bump. That's her second foul. Raven Venegas will step out. In comes Mallory Proffer. Proffer with no points on the night, 0 for 3 from the floor, has taken one three pointer and could not shoot it. In for Boaz, hands off Guffey. 
Guffey will walk the tight line. And Abby Reese called for a second foul, that's three. Two fouls in the last 30 seconds. Joins the foul trouble party with Michaela Jackson with three, Abby Nichols with three, Reese Arnold with three. High inbound, off the back of Callie Dowler and Jackson rips it away. Blue Jays trail by one off to Reese Arnold on the right wing. Puts the ball on the floor and drives between the circles. Floats it up, it's good! 48-47 and the Blue Jays climb back on top. Back and forth we go with Guffey looking open lane. All right side, ball hangs on the rim and it's good! That ball hung on the city of the edge of forever. Bounce through the net for one. Make that two points and a chance to make it three with Guffey at the line. Guffey into double digits on the layup and now has 11 points. And the Blue Jays respond in a great move off the right side. Tied at 50, Jackson knots us again. Weave to Stafford in the front court. Jackson lost her balance, give to Boaz. Kicked it out, Proffer will drive inside the free throw line. Gives it out, and a three swished by Guffey. Guffey with 14, putting the team on her back. And it's the three point lead for Fontbonne, tying their largest lead of the game. She's been a force to be reckoned with off the bench, leads all bench scorers, and the only player off the bench for the Griffins with points. Five of six from the floor, two of three from beyond the arc, and two of three from the free throw line. Six rebounds, one assists, and of course the 14 points. Forcing turnovers and putting her team back in a good position into the final 6.52 we go. Blue Jays trail 53-50. You've got to get Callahan involved. No points so far in the quarter. Reese Arnold trying to pick up some slack playing with three fouls and eight points. But 0 for 4 from downtown, and that's been the story of the game. It's the Blue Jays not hitting their outside shots. They're 4 of 17 from beyond the arc. And you look at Fontbonne, both two out of the three three-pointers made tonight have been off the hand of Riley Guffey. Other than that, they're 3 of 12 from the beyond the arc. Arnold down low. Goes coast to coast and posts up with Boaz. Boaz will draw the foul. Marine CS will plead her case to the officials. Wanted the shot on the floor, rather the foul on the floor and not on the shot, as Boaz will pick up her third and Arnold at the line can't knock down the first free throw. Arnold's two for four from the stripe in this game and the Blue Jays have left five points on the board or should say on the table, and that would give them the lead, but they knock it down to a two-point game. 53-51. Guffey hands off White. Back to Stafford running the same play. Stafford to Boaz out of the left perimeter, hands off Guffey, thought about the three. Dowler hands in her face, drives right side. Open look between the circles, has it chopped down. But the X swung too hard and got her on the wrist. Four fouls for Abby Reese, and in will come Abby Nichols. Two free throws for Guffey. If she makes both, she'll be tied for the team lead with Raven Venegas, and there's the first one through. You look at Fontbonne, it's been a different player in each quarter. First quarter was the reigning Slayak Player of the Week, Stafford, the lead up to four for the Griffins with both free throws netted by Guffey. Time for the team lead was 16, and Raven Venegas stepped up in the second quarter. She has 16 points tonight. It's been Riley Guffey here in the third and at the end of the half. Four minutes deep into the fourth, and the Blue Jays can't buy a bucket. Callahan, or rather Jackson, corrals it right corner, zips it out up top for Reese Arnold. 15 to shoot. Arnold wanted to pull up the three, instead gives to Dowler left side. Dowler. Bouncer on the floor to Callahan, shoots it up over two heads, and pulls up with 18. 55-53, the Blue Jays trail by two. 
Stafford to Boaz, wants the ball back, but instead will cut down low. Hands off to Guffey, right wing, dribbles behind the back, now down to the right wing line. Gives to Stafford for three. Stafford bricks it high. Reese Arnold will pull out the rebound. Blue Jays can tie in a two or take the lead with a three. They've not made many of those tonight. Meanwhile, stole it away. Here goes Proffer. Proffer to the cup. Strip and steal, but it's lost out of bounds. Arnold got back on defense, put up a stand. It will be Griffin basketball, but at least it's not a guaranteed two points. Chance for your team to get the ball back. Proffer gives in Raven Venegas. Gives to Guffey for three. Guffey bricks it hard off the back iron. Rebounded by Callahan off to Dowler. Dowler for three, swish! Blue Jays retake the lead with 5.04 to go, 56-55. Stafford wants two points and she's gonna get it. Lead back on top for one for Fontbonne. High pass to Dowler, keeps it in play. Just nailed a three a moment ago, and Reese Arnold, it's her turn to shine, but instead Raven Venegas has another idea, and she gets the rebound. Up to White, White and Arnold go toe for toe. And Arnold got a good hand on the ball, but a late foul is called. Arnold can't believe it. Two free throws upcoming for White. Four fouls for Reese Arnold and the Blue Jays in a bit of a bind. Two of their starters have four fouls. Abby Reese, the other one. White's first free throw is right down Main Street. Fontbon has now knocked down 11 out of 15 free throws on the game. Second one is released and in. Three point game, Griffin's on top. As we've seen, no lead is good enough for either side. We go back and forth on the tug of war battle. Bouncer to the right. Abby Reese to Cali Dowler. Dowler up center floor. To bring it back out. Looking for a way to penetrate the armor. Gives to Reese Arnold. Into traffic, and the floater is netted. Up and in on the floater for two. 59-58, lead cut down to one for the Griffins. 3.53 remaining here in Fulton. Guffey unavailable, go down to the right corner and Callahan pokes it away. Callahan two points and the Blue Jays lost to Webster on Saturday. The ball inbounded, Raven Venegas lost the ball on the floor, puts it up and a high rebound. Callahan keeps it out in front, nine boards, 18 points. This will be for the lead. Callie Dowler misses left side. What a rebound, flying in. Off the train from Jeff City comes Michaela Jackson. Foul is called on the four, second one. Tab to Raven Venegas. Love the effort by the Blue Jays, whether it's Michaela Jackson trying to keep her team in this. 20. 20 or Reese Arnold, and officials make sure there's enough time on the shot clock. Reese Arnold will have the inbound. Keys it in deep to Dowler. Dowler hands off back to Reese, up top the key. Drives right side at the right elbow. Gives it down low, and a foul from behind. Abby Nichols will shoot two. White got too much wrist. Rather than the ball, but... Maureen Sias says got a lot of ball, but all it takes is a little bit of the wrist. The first free throw, Natsis at 59. Nichols on the night with three points. 
Rather make that four, two of three from the stripe. Give her team the lead if she makes this one, and that's what happens. Griffin's trying to win their first road game since December 4th. That was last year and in the last decade. Raven Venegas, tough down low, but a foul called against Abby Nichols. Alicia Washington does not like the call. And that's the fourth foul charged to Nichols' account. First free throw misses. One left, and on that foul, the Griffins are in the bonus. Two free throws from the rest of the way out. This could tie the game, and Raven Venegas. Laces it through for a 15, rather make it a 60 game all. Timeout on the floor as we head to the final 304. We'll take a break on the Blue Jays Sports Network, not at its 60. This is Westminster College basketball. Hearts are pounding on both sides, and we're tied at 60 as we head to the final three minutes and three seconds. Blue Jays have a couple three players in foul trouble and have to be careful. Welcome back courtside at Historic Gym in Westminster College, Fulton, Missouri. And a left side drive, Corey Reese. Remember, Abby Reese gives the lead back to the Blue Jays, 62-60. Guffey across the timeline, angles near side. Dallard chases her into the right corner and bounces the ball to Raven Venegas, puts it up and in, and we're tied again. Could have overtime. Both sides not wanting to give up the lead. Could come down to a free throw, maybe a three-point bucket. Dallard zips the ball low to Callahan through traffic and can't finish it, gets her own rebound, it's up and good. Second chance opportunity and Callaway with 20 points. She has a double-double, 10 rebounds. Raven Venegas tanks down low and spins. And once again, pops it on the right hook. That gives her 21. Tied again at 64 with Reese Arnold calling a play. Dribbles down low, and White has the basketball. It's on the floor. Blue Jays trying to get it back, but Guffey comes away. Four players down. We'll play three on three for a moment. But Corey Rabby Reese comes flying in and knocks the ball out of bounds. One minute and 36 seconds left in the fourth. Each team with 64, Stafford from a three-point line. Now's the Blue Jays' turn. They gotta get a three, if at least a two. Callahan, past the defense, floats it up high. Wants her own rebound, Raven Venegas clears. Here's the Stafford. Stafford, it's a foot race, right side, too strong. White puts it up and she's fouled. Dowler charged for her second. And the Blue Jays trying to avoid a home loss 
But for the Griffins, a chance for them to pick up their first road win since early December. It was against Mac Murray, and the first free throw is through. The largest lead of the game for the Griffins has been four points. If White can make the free throw, it'll make it the largest lead of five. And the Blue Jays need something special as the time is, timeout is called. 69-64, Blue Jays trailing at home by five. 112 to play, and we'll keep it right here during the break. Take a look how the rest of the games in the Sleak are falling out and the final score with Webster beating Blackburn 84 to 46. Webster will continue to solidify its spot at the top of the conference. Now Leapfrogs Spalding at six and one, Spalding second at five and one. Winner of this game will vault into second place with the loser dropping down to third not a little farther. Blue Jays have not lost a game in this building since November 24th. And they are undefeated in the in SLEAC play at home. So something could definitely change in the final minute 12 we go. Who could step up and play hero? The three-point ball has not been falling in favor of the Blue Jays in this one. They're five of 20 from beyond the arc. 11 of 16 from the free throw line. Those five free throws make up the deficit. I should say those five misses. Seconds are precious as Reese Arnold will cross the line near side. If you don't make this shot, it's nearly good night, Irene. Callahan hands off Dowler up top the key. Dowler with some space for three. Planks up short. Raven Venegas has the rebound. Now you got a foul. 53 seconds remaining in the game. Reese Arnold will chop down on Courtney White. She's going back to the stripe. White has taken five. Rather, has taken six free throws tonight and has only made five. And the fifth foul of the game tagged on Reese Arnold. Her night is over with 11 points, 0 for 5 from beyond the arc. You have one free throw to give up here if you're the Blue Jays. Six points is doable. Seven and 47.9 seconds is nearly impossible. Second one is made, so... Blue Jays coming in on a wing in the prayer. They trail by seven with 47.9 to go. The Griffins are leading at the most important time. All smiles across the bench, but got to remember basketball, a game of runs, and the Blue Jays could be a volcano waiting to erupt. They've not exploded since the first quarter. They jumped out to a 10-point lead at the end of one. Raven Venegas with 21 for Fontbon. For Westminster, McKaylin Callahan leads with 20 points. Arnold has 11. She just fouled out. Callie Dowler with 10. Dowler's 3 of 8 from beyond the arc, so maybe that's the player you want to get the ball, create an open shot. It's going to take at least two trays to climb back into this game, but your team's down by 7 with a tenth of a second less than 48 to play. Corey Reese, center floor. Blue Jays need a quick shot. Kendall Miller will fire the three. Bangs the shot, but an offensive foul called away from the ball. Rather not an offensive foul, just a walk called against the Blue Jays. They give it back to Fontbonne. That's exactly what they needed. Now it's taken away. Got to get a steal here for the Blue Jays. Inbounded to Guffey, and Guffey fouled very quickly. Dowler will pick up her third foul. She'll go back to the line. Rather, this will put Guffey at the line. She's 4 or 5 from the free throw stripe. Fontbonne collectively 17 of 22 from the line. First free throw bricks away. 
39 seconds to go. Second free throw makes it an eight point ball game. Talisha Washington feeling the heat here, but she has faith in her team to climb back out of this mess. We'll take a break on the Blue Jays Sports Network. 39 seconds to go. We'll be right back. This is Westminster College Blue Jays basketball. Final 37 to go. Corey Reese up top, down to Callahan. From the free throw line, Callahan makes. Clock stops at 31.1 seconds. And Fontbonne will use the timeout. And the lead is down to six, so crazier things have happened. If it could happen anywhere, it would be at the Division Three. Even NAIA level. Six point ball game in favor of the Griffins. Great effort, a great team win when the Griffins are starting to look back at the end of the season. And how much of a difference it started to make when they started playing collectively as a team. You look at their last time out as they drop a game to Spalding, 80 to 49, 20 out of the 49 points coming from Riley Stafford, and tonight it's been a three-headed approach. Venegas with 21, Guffey with 17. Don't forget Courtney White, she's been true from the free throw line, seven of eight. 13 points for White. And a much different performance out of the Griffins than their last time out on Saturday. Will be Griffin basketball. Jackson will sub into the game. Blue Jays trailing 72-66 with 31.1 seconds to go. And the inbound with Callie Dowler quickly fouling Stafford. Four of five from the free throw line and can start to put the game on ice if she makes both free throws. That is four fouls called against Dowler. Dowler comes to the scores table to check out. Miller does take her spot. And rather that's five fouls on Dowler, she's out of the game. Well, Dowler's night is done. 10 points for the starter, three of eight from beyond the arc. That was the one player you wanted to get your hands on the three-point ball, and the chances continuing to drop for the Blue Jays to come back and win this. Not to mention the chances go down every time a shot is made, and that makes it a seven-point game. In favor of the Griffins. Stafford will try one more. Stafford pulls in the light, rather the free throw. Tied for the team lead in 21. Callahan low has no one to help her. No shot clock up top to Abby Reese. You got to shoot the ball. Abby Reese for three. A little short, clanks up high. Tipped out. And the Griffins have the basketball. 12.8 to go. Fontabon, a couple free throws away from having this one in the basket. Tough game for the Blue Jays. With the Griffins trying to solidify their spot as number two in the conference. Proffer's first free throw makes the lead even more impossible. Second free throw up and coming. Nine point ball game in favor of Fontbonne. Second free throw. I think you can say that ice is the game. Blue Jays will fall to five and nine. With eight seconds to play, and a floater to stop the inevitable. Final score, the only thing that's pending. 
And that'll do it. Westminster now four and three in the SLEAC. And the Griffins improve to six and eight, five and two overall, as their campaign continues in 2019. Run through the final stats as the leading scorer for the Blue Jays is Callahan with 22. Raven Venegas netted 21, Stafford with 20, Guffey with 17. And to pick a player of the game, really could be Riley Guffey with that offensive spark down low at the end of the first half. Still in the ball away and taking it in for two, or really never a wrong guess with Raven Venegas or Riley Stafford. For them, some of their last trips here to mid-Missouri as the Blue Jays fall 76 to 68 and shoot 38% from the floor. They tried 22 three-pointers, but just made five and won 11 of 16 from the charity stripe. And story of the game was fouls, really, for the Blue Jays. They sent Fontbonne to the line 28 times, and they came up with 22. Made free throws, four of 15 from beyond the arc. Both teams turned the ball over 15 times. Blue Jays out-rebounded Fontbonne 40 to 36, but in the end, it was not much of a difference maker as two Westminster Blue Jays foul out and Arnold and Dowler with Nichols, Jackson, and Abby Reese all picking up four fouls. So with Ray Imamura out of the equation for now, we'll see what happens on Saturday as the Blue Jays remain at home. Lots of basketball left to be played. But as we get set for our doubleheader, the men's game between Fontbonne and Westminster just starting to get warmed up. And we'll be right back on the Blue Jays Sports Network. But for meanwhile, for all of us here at Westminster College, for Sports Information Director Riley Driscoll, this is James Stanley saying so long and farewell. Stay tuned on the Blue Jays Sports Network. More basketball up to come. <laughs>